I serve on a lot of teams, but if I started naming them, it is way too much. Um, but the main teams that I serve on is worship and everything that kind of trickles down from that. Um, so you'll find me running around there. Um, so today I wanted to speak on fear. All of my notes are on my phone, so I will be holding my phone. I do apologize. Um, so before anything, I always, anytime I ever talk to my friends, I tell them, you know, you got to do a trigger warning. Um, my life story is not for the week. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot that I unpack, you know, when I, when I talk about the things that I've gone through. Um, I wish it was a story of rainbows and, and roses, but it's not. So just a little trigger warning. Um, so I wanted to talk about fear. Um, I know that a lot of you may not know me, some of you do, but um, I think one thing that we all have in common is that at one point in our life, we felt fear for whatever reason. Can you say, yeah. Can we yes. agree? Right? Yeah. At some point in your life, you felt fear. I know that I definitely. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm going to tell you guys, you know, um, the two different fears that I felt in my life. First is the fears that I felt were paralyzing, and then the fears that I felt like were the push fears. Okay, because I do feel like fear can do a lot of things. Fear can either paralyze you or it can push you. So there are two, and I think a lot of us have experienced both. <clears throat> so I remember the first time I felt fear. Um, my, my, and it was when my dad went too far in beating me so that I couldn't walk. I was four and, the la and that lasted until I was 18. I remember the fear I felt to be around men because of what happened when I was seven and then 18 and then 19 um, due to people that my parents trusted. I remember the fear I felt when I started swallowing pills and I woke up from having down the whole bottle. I remember the fear I felt when I realized I had become addicted to sex while trying to stay alive and cope unhealthily. And, and when I was addicted to coke. I remember the fear I felt after I got married to a nice guy from church whom I only knew two months because of fear that no one else would love me. I remember the fear I felt when my husband became verbally and mentally abusive and believed, and believed that I would be in that position for the rest of my life. I remember the fear I felt when I became a single mom and lost my job not one, not, not twice, but three times. I remember the fear I felt walking out of an abortion clinic and thinking God would never speak to me again or love me again. I remember the fear I felt when I started to lose friends, when I started realizing the people weren't who they said they were in my life. I remember the fear I felt when I lost my job, my home, my credit, and I was raising my son, Logan. I'm a, I'm a single mom, for those Woo! of you who don't know. Um, and I have a little three-year-old, three he's a three-nager. That's what we call him. Mm -hmm. who, has, who has toddlers? Mm -hmm. oh, they're all on this, I think you need to. <laughs> Um, he's not here because you will definitely hear him and I will not be able to be up here. Um, so before talking about, that's the fear that uh, really paralyzed me for a very long time. You know, I'm 25 years old. Yes, I'm young. Um, but I think a lot of time when wasted, when you allow fear to paralyze you, right? So I just want to do a little bit of imagery. I'm a visual person. I like to visualize things. I like to talk about things that, you know, I can close my eyes and I can visualize and that's how I learn. So I want you guys to take a moment, close your eyes. And I'm going to speak, and I want you guys to just picture yourselves up, you know, in this place. So I want you guys to picture yourself in a field, a beautiful flowery field where the sun 
is shining on you. It's not Florida weather, so it's not hot. It's beautiful spring. You know, you're running through the fields. You can hear people laughing. You feel safe. And then out of nowhere, it changes. And now it's nighttime. And now you're running through the forest, and now there's no path. And you're there, you're feeling cold. You don't know anyone around you. You can't hear anyone. All you can hear is noises of things moving in the woods. Do you feel fear? Fear of the unknown? Fear of you don't know where you're gonna go? What to do next? The important thing to do is to keep walking. You guys can open your eyes. I think I've found myself a lot in that forest. How many of you guys have found yourself in that forest in life? For many things, for whatever reason. Whether you lost your job, whether something didn't work out the way you hoped for, you know. Um, but I wanna talk about how we can change that fear and transform it and what God says about it. So <clears throat> in Psalm 16, verse five through six, this is the message version. It just helps me read the Bible this way. You can read it, whatever version helps you. But I like this version because it says, my choice is you, God, first and only. And now I find I'm your choice. You set me up with a house and a yard, and then you made me your heir. How many of you know that you're heirs of a kingdom? Do you guys know that? That God gave us this kingdom, that we inherit that kingdom, and all you have to do is say yes to him. Like, that's crazy. All you have to do is say, you know what, God? I want you. I want this. You know, I want to be heir of what you have given me, what you, your son sacrificed for me. Now, I want to talk about the times in my life where I felt fear, but it was a push, right? <clears throat> I remember the fear I felt when I spoke about my sexual abuse. I remember the fear I felt when I decided I'd never go back to my toxic relationship. I remember the fear I felt when I decided to leave my parents home at the age of 18, making only $8 an hour supporting my brother and I. I remember the fear I felt when I decided to come to a new church where I wouldn't be sexually abused by my pastor. I remember the fear I felt when I decided to go to therapy and choose to heal and forgive. I remember the fear I felt when I decided to co-lead a small group for single mothers. I remember the fear I felt and feel when God gave me a position in a new company that I was way less than qualified for. I remember when I started my celibacy journey, my addiction recovery journey. I remember when I decided to open my heart to women and to people and finally get into a community. You see, we can have two fears coexist. You can have the fear that paralyzes you, that makes you, it, like, you know, fear is it's funny because it starts like this and then you go home and you start thinking and thinking and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes your fear is something that started like this and it could have been so simple, but our minds made it this big thing. How many of you have overthought yourself yeah. into like panic or anxiety? I know that I definitely have anxiety on a daily basis and I have to remind myself of what God's word says. Um, <clears throat> so I wanna give you guys quick five action steps when it comes to fear, when you feel fear. Cause it's something that I've had to check myself and I, I cannot tell you that I have like made it because I'm still in this journey. I am probably very, very not supposed to be here, basically, you know? Um, I, I can tell you I'm probably like the worst person that you'd want to be up here because I've lived a crazy life, but because of God, like, but God, that phrase is crazy. You know what I'm saying? And those of you who know me, you know, you know what I'm saying? So first thing is when you feel fear, acknowledge your fear. Don't avoid it. It's so easy to live in avoidance. It's so easy to like completely isolate yourself from something that you're afraid of because it's our natural instinct because we're human. You know, most of us run, most of us are not fight, you know, fight or flight. Most of us are flight when you're in like deep fear, you know? So acknowledge your fear, sit with yourself and analyze what is it that you're actually afraid of. Number two, bring it to the throne. This is so big and it's something that I've had to learn is before you, and it's something, it's funny because I was talking to Abby last night about something and she's like, have you talked to God about it? Bring it to the throne first. Before you get the opinion of anyone else, it does not matter if they're your bestie, it does not matter if they're your family, bring it to God first. Listen to what God has to say first. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the opinions of our friends and the people that we love. And that's great that you have accountability, but bring it to God first because his word is what matters. You know what I'm saying? So... <clears throat> Um, and then to add to that, we have to remember that when Jesus died, he left the Holy Spirit for us so that we have direct access to the Father. You no longer have to, I need a meeting with my pastor because I need to tell her this. Go to God first, even in that circumstance. Go to God <laughs> first, because guess what? Your pastor is a human being. They're gonna fail you. They're humans just like any of us, you know? So number three, silence the enemy. It's so important to know that we cannot heal what we don't expose. 
The enemy wants you to stay quiet. The enemy wants you to, y'all, it's crazy because I was telling my friends this last week, anytime that you choose to not speak about something that you're fearful of, something that it's like drowning your thoughts, you're literally giving power to the enemy because that's what he wants. He wants you to isolate. And it's like swallowing poison. You know what that is? That you're willingly swallowing poison and instead of letting the poison exit from your body, you let it sit there. And it starts affecting your mind, it starts affecting your heart, it starts affecting your daily functions. So it's important, bring it to the Father. Silence the enemy, bring it to the throne. Number four, accountability. I cannot tell you the only reason, the sole reason that I'm here today is because I have a good God that put people around me. You know, and it, and it took a lot of swallowing my shame. It took a lot of swallowing my pride. It took a lot of, it's you know, very difficult and uncomfortable conversations. I can't, I can't be up here and tell you that it was an easy road. I can't tell you that it was just like, I was loved and it was great. It wasn't like that. It was me saying, this, this is the ugly person that I am. Literally having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God and telling God, I am tired of pretending. I'm tired of pretending that I am not afraid of who I am. Cause I think one of the biggest fears was myself. Yeah. Am I capable? You know, am I qualified? Can I actually overcome this? Can I actually get to where I'm trying to go to, to the goal? You know, one of the biggest things that I had to do was sit with God and say, God, this is exactly who I am. I'm gonna expose it all out. It's gonna sound ugly, it's disgusting, but this is who I am. Now work with me. And as soon as you do that, do you know that you are emptying yourself out and you're allowing God to pour into you? You say, God, I just emptied out myself, I feel empty. And now the next step is to say, okay, but God, now fill me. Take out all the things that don't glorify you. And, and yo, it's hard, because sometimes we can be real. How many of you have done that, but only given the 99% where you're like, you know, God, I'll, I'll give you the 90 but this one thing, we don't have to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that later. We'll, we'll tackle on that later. I've done that. Have you guys done that? Yes. Right? Let's be real. Like, I've, I've done that plenty of times where I've told God, you know what, God, this is too ugly. It's embarrassing, and I don't want to take this to you because you're my dad. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, if you give him that 100%, he can do wonders. And then number five is live. Accept that you are human, you will fail, but do not be afraid because God will be right there to help you. He helps us figure out what didn't work and his word is the tool to comfort us and renew us. And then one of the Bible verses that I wrote here says, I stretch myself out, I sleep, then I'm up again, rested, tall and ready, fearless before the enemy mobs, coming at me from all sides. I love that verse because the Bible really, if there's one thing that the Bible does, is that it's really good at acknowledging the real things that we live. Sometimes I think it was really hard for me to read the Bible for a long time because I'm like, yo, they didn't go through half the stuff that we went through. And that's not true. Like if you actually get into your word, you see that there is another Keisha, there's another Abby, there's, you know, like so many different, there's another Brooke, so many different people that reflect us. There's another <laughs> Ashley in there too, baby. Um, south side of the kingdom, you know. Um, <laughs> there, there's so many of us reflected in the Bible, you know. There's so many sins that you think that the Bible doesn't talk about, and it does. And there's people just like us, unqualified people, less than people, that decided to go against their fear and become great things, and now we get to talk about them. So how would your life look like if you decided to be fearless and started living like somebody's writing a book about you? That's what we have to, we have to put that, that helmet on every single day. If somebody's writing up a book about me, I, I don't know about you guys, but I want it to be a good book, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to be gangster, I want it to be a fighter book, I want it to be, you know, lessons. I don't want to leave this earth without conquering every single fear that I had and without showing the enemy that God still had me. Even if it took months, even if it took years, he still got me. Yeah. So, that is it for me. Alana. Uh, <laughs> wow. I'll take the compliment. It's okay. I like her. My brain was like going forward, but backwards. You know, I'm a mom, so I have like mom brain sometimes. So. Um, thank you, Keisha, for sharing that. Thank you for being willing to come up here and be vulnerable like that. Because every yeah. month that somebody shares their story, it's like they're giving you a piece of them, yeah. you know? Just to, so that you can have an idea that somebody up here is going through something very similar to what you're going through. Sometimes we feel so alone as women. Um, we're like, we're going through something and we're kind of like just like, nobody can understand this because I'm going through like the worst possible scenario. And then you go to like a small group or something and somebody tells you like what they're going through and you're like, oh my God, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. But um, thank you so much. And I get the honor and privilege of presenting one of my best friends, Alana. She's going to be speaking on comparison, and guys, she has prepared a word. So can you guys help me welcome her? Woo! Woo!
quite a testimony and I know that how you're how God has brought you here and how God is using you is only the beginning of your story and in Jesus name I know he's going to use your heart and everything that you've gone through Amen. to minister to other women who, who are going through something that you went through in your past so in Jesus name thank you so much that was that was incredible that I, I never knew so I'm so glad that I'm here today and I heard that so thank you for sharing um, so before we get started I wanted to just honor Erica and her story. I'm not sure if um, some of you might have already been coming for a couple of our of the Her Story events that we have, um, but if it's your first time, I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, my beautiful best friend, I remember when it started, um, she felt something in her heart, like her heart was super sensitive to what God was putting, and she's like, Anna, I feel like God wants to bring a women's ministry here to journey. Like, I feel like he wants me to start it. He wants me to get things going. Like, and, and she's like, and I know he wants me to do it. I just don't know how. And I remember hearing her, um, and, and just talking to her about how she was going to be meeting with like other churches and other leaders close and really far to, to be able to have an understanding of how to start that here. And she was just such a little hustler, like literally meeting with all these people and trying to get meetings. And then she'd be meeting with our pastors and our leadership team. And sometimes she would hit dead, dead ends and, and or walls. And then she that wouldn't stop her. She'd just keep going and going. And so I just wanted to thank you so much for being obedient to what God placed in your heart because Journey Church definitely needed this. Journey Church is a church that is growing so quickly. I feel like every Sunday we come in and we see more and more new faces. Um, and I'm so grateful because I've missed only like one or two, I think, but the ones that I've been to, like they really have ministered to me. They've poured so much into me and I'm so grateful that we have this space here. So Erica, thank you so much. And thank you to your incredible team too. I know you have Kim and Nicole and Glenda and some other ladies that are not here today. So I'm just so grateful and so thankful. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name's Alana. I have the incredible blessing of being part of Journey Church's Freedom Team. Um, and <laughs> and um, I love Journey Church. I love Journey Church so much. Um, this is where I first accepted God in my heart. This is where my little sister first accepted God in her heart. This is where I was baptized. This is where I first started serving. Um, I was not a Christian, and this is where God just changed my life. So I love this church. This church has a very special place in my heart, and I'm so thankful for it. Um, but before all those things happened, um, I probably, the, the reason why I ended up at Journey Church is because I had literally reached the lowest point in my life. I had been engaged and I called it off and I jumped into a very toxic relationship and I felt abandoned by my family, rejected by my friends. I felt really not good enough. I felt less than. I had really bad uh, self-confidence and self-assurance. I, no, I had no self-worth and a lot of those things were coming from a place of me comparing myself and literally expecting myself to be this version of, of someone of, that no one had ever asked me to be, that God had never called me to be. And so that's how I ended up at Journey Church. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is comparison. Um, by a quick show of hands, is there anybody here who has ever compared themselves to a celebrity or maybe a celebrity's looks? Yeah, me too. <laughs> how, many, how many people here? I know it's, it's, it's sad how common it is, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, how many people here have ever maybe compared themselves to a coworker, or maybe somebody at church and their strengths and their skills, right? It's so common. Um, maybe you're in a relationship or in a marriage and you compare your marriage to another couple's marriage. Maybe you guys have kids and you look at your child and you're like, you're hoping that your child is more like someone else's child. It's funny, you're finished asking the question more like me. Um, yeah, so it's really sad and it's heartbreaking, unfortunately, um, how normal it is in our society for us to compare ourselves. And, and if you think about it, um, we're living right now in a generation where middle school girls, high school girls, college girls are all being raised and, and, and believing that they are not good enough because they're seeing social media and they're seeing um, these things on, t on television and they're, they're feeling that they have the need to, to live up to the standard expectation where God never called them to be up to live to that expectation. God never told them that they needed to be like that. And so it's extremely heartbreaking because what we're doing is we're devaluing ourselves in the process of comparison. Um, when I was preparing for this, I saw something online. I'm like, wow, that's a word. What I saw is don't compare don't compare your behind the scenes to somebody else's highlight reel. Ooh. I saw that and I was like, so that's good. a word. That's a word for yeah. me because we go on social media and we see like, you know, people posting cute stories or their perfect little family or their awesome like fitness body. And like, good for you, girl. I got work to do, you know, like I'm working on that. But that doesn't take away from who I am, you know? And I think about that and I'm like, that is so true. You have no idea the blood, the sweat, and the tears that it took that person to get there. Or you have no idea that the perfect little family maybe isn't truly that perfect, you know? We have no idea what it looks like, what they're going through, uh, or what it took for, for them to even take that picture. But here we are comparing our behind the scenes to their highlight reels. I thought that was so good when I saw that. 
Um, and again, it's sad because God has never put that expectation on us to be like someone else. He wants us to be the best version of ourselves, who yeah. He created, who He intended us to be. So I want to share with you guys a Bible verse that I was preparing. Um, it's Psalm 139. If you guys have your phones out, if you don't mind taking it out, because I want every woman here uh, to highlight that and book that, bookmark that Bible verse so they can meditate on it. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard this Bible verse. I certainly have. It's, 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 it's one of the, the common ones that we hear. But I don't know if you guys have heard it in the message version. I was like, wow. You know, I normally don't listen to the message. Um, I, I don't read it in the message. I, I stick to my CSV or NLT. But I really love the message because, um, well, let me, let me read it to you and tell you why. Oh, yes. You, so it's uh, Psalm 139, 13 to 16. Oh, yes. You shake me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I love that version so much because the other versions don't break it down like this. It's talking about body and soul, inside and out. So what that tells us as a reader is that that includes every single part of you, inside and out. Not one detail is left out. That means God made absolutely no mistakes when he was creating you. Every part of you, inside and out, was chosen and uniquely put in you. And, and he, he knit us together for a reason, for a specific purpose. And so... Um, that happens to me all the time. Don't know I've never had to do that. No, that's okay. Um, but it's it's so good to remember that because essentially when you read that, and and I know I'm asking you guys to highlight that and bookmark that Bible verse so that you guys can meditate on it. And it's important because God didn't forget to give us a specific trait. And sometimes when we're comparing ourselves to someone else or to something else, we're thinking that you know if only I was like this person or if only I had this. Um, and it's really sad because that's not how God wants us to see ourselves. Um, I'm going to share with you a little bit of um, a little bit, a little small snippet of my testimony. Um, but it um, it's important for us to, to remember that. So, um, in case anyone needed a reminder, like I just said, God created us all perfectly in His image. And the truth about comparison is, before I get into my story, is that it's really common. We we talked about it. And unfortunately, we live in a society where it's a norm, and everything that we have, like the, all the entertainment and social media, it doesn't help, unfortunately. Um, but I learned as a woman that one of the tactics and one of the plots and the schemes that the enemy has is to literally use comparison as a weapon against us. Not only does it steal our joy and our self-confidence and our peace, but it also distracts us from our purpose. Absolutely. And it distracts us from our purpose because we are so focused on who we are not mm -hmm. that we can't focus on who we actually are. We're so focused on what we don't have that we can't focus on what we do have. I look at this room of women and I see women who have beautiful voices. If I was so <laughs> focused on my inability to sing, maybe I wouldn't be able to focus on my ability to pray. You know, God Ooh, may not have blessed me with the yes, voice, but my husband good, can yes. attest with that. <laughs> <laughs> he sure can. He sure can. He's like, baby, I love you. God bless you, but boy, yeah, you really can't sing. I'm like, that's okay. God, God, God accepts my worship. Um, you know, he's so loving and he's so kind. Um, but, but it's true, you know, like I, if I compared myself to one of their beautiful voices and their ability to worship God, you know, that would really take away from the gift that God gave me, and that's to pray, to be fervently just in, in tune with Him. Um, and there's so many things like that that we're constantly doing. We're, to, we're, 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 being, we're falling, essentially, right into the enemy's plans. And his plans are to completely distract us, to derail us. Yeah. He comes, what does the Bible say? That the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's yep, exactly that's what he's good. doing. So it's important, important for us to remember that he created every single part of us, inside and out, intentionally, uniquely, and for a purpose. That means he did not make any mistakes. Contrary to what you, what me, what we are all believing, contrary to what social media is making us think, society, so I need you guys to remember that. So honestly, as a group of women that we are right now, we all have uh, other women that we love that might not be here with, with us today. And so we need to start thanking God for who we are and who he has called us to be. And we also need to start thanking him for who we're not. Thank God that I'm not, you know, Thank God that God didn't put that on, on me to, to have to sing, because good Lord, like I know the practices and then the ability to get in front of so many people, that, that's a burden I don't think I could handle, you know? So we need to start thanking God for who we are and who we are not, because he didn't make a mistake on that. Um, and so my, my small snippet of like my testimony is that I remember the very first day, like literally I remember where I was driving, what the weather was like, it was raining just like a movie, and I was literally like bawling my eyes out. I had just gotten off the phone with Erica, and I was bawling my eyes out and I was like, I am so tired, God. I am so tired. So, okay, before that, um, the day I realized that the enemy my whole life had just used the, the trait in me that I was focusing on hating so much against me to distract me was, if you guys don't know me, um, which I know I see a lot of faces here, so I, I see a lot of you may not. Um, I'm somebody who loves very deeply, very fervently, very passionately. I'm a very passionate person. 
And I know we hear that and like, okay, she has a big heart. No. Like, um, <laughs> something, that, something that my husband and I learned when we went through a premarital Christian counseling was that the way that God created me um, was when it came to love, my ability to receive love will never be, it's never enough. So no one will ever be able to love me and me feel like it's enough. Um, and that's good because it, it pushes me, it drives me to come back to God, to always take it that's to God. Good. So it, it's, I, I really love that we did that through counseling because it set us up for success and showed us both that like the way that God created Alana and the, the special gifts and skills and strengths that he deposited in me was that so that everything I would do would need to come back to him. He is constantly fulfilling me. He is the one that keeps me going. He is the one that satisfies me. Not my husband, not my mom, not my position, not my ministry, God and God alone. And then on the flip side, my ability and my desire to give love to others is also, it will never be enough. I constantly have the need to be there to encourage, to love, like that's how God created me. So before I learned that, I hated that about myself. And I know that sounds crazy, but let me tell you why. Um, I grew up and unfortunately my whole life, and, and I know that my family didn't mean well, I know, you know, bless their hearts, we all make mistakes and you know, none of us were Christian back then. My whole life I felt rejected. My whole life I was told that I was too much, that I was too intense, that I loved way too much. I was told that I was overbearing. I remember I, I told my sister how much I loved her and she would never say anything. She's like, you're overbearing, you're just too much. I went to hug my mom one time and she literally pushed me away. She's like, I, I can't right now, I don't, I don't wanna, and I, that hurt me so much. And I for, I've forgiven her, but there are things that mark you and there are things that start tearing you down. And I remember my ex-boyfriends would tell me like, you're just too much. You're too much, you love too much, you're too intense. And those are words of death that were spoken over me. And I literally thought that there was something wrong with my ability and my desire to, to love others. I hated that part of myself. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I had friends, my sister and my, my best friends, um, they were this like cool, calm, collected chick, like always had guys wrapped around their fingers. I know now that that's not good, but back then I'm like, I wanna be like them, you know? Um, every, like, and to me, I was like so, so genuine. I, had, I wore my heart on my sleeve. I'm like, you're cold, let me give you my sweater. Like, are you hungry? Let me, like, come in here, come inside. Let me make you something, you know? If my boyfriend had a bad day at work, like, hey, I'm so sorry, do you wanna meet up? Can I bring you some food? Do you wanna do, like, that's just how I am, you know? And it's not from a people pleasing thing. Like, I do it because it truly comes naturally yes. to me. Um, but I hated that and the more people the more I was rejected and the more I heard that the more I hated that until um, I literally got out of the worst toxic relationship ever thank you Jesus and, and that's where I was like you know what I hate this so much and I remember let's just back fast forward to the day I remember I was like God I was crying I was literally bawling my eyes out it was like raining like a movie I pulled over and I was like God like I hate this about myself like no matter how hard I try I cannot change this like I no matter how hard I try not to show too much I feel like I'm playing a game because it just comes naturally to me like change me like why do i have to be like this like I, i'm tired of feeling this way like i'm tired of being pushed away i'm tired of not being loved back like what's wrong with me why am i this way and thank you god so much because i remember he spoke so clearly to me and he told me he's like don't you see i created you that way don't you see that the love that you have in your heart comes from me so that you can love others in my kingdom the love that i place in your heart is because this world needs light and love i want you this way god I, I'm not being dramatic, everything changed for me. Like when I heard that, everything changed. I was like, wow, there's nothing wrong with me. Like I've been focusing on this part of me that I hate so much, but you are telling me that you made me this way intentionally. The world has been making me feel that I'm not good enough, that I'm not living to the standard, but you are telling me that I am chosen, that you have, that this is my qualifier, wow. everything changed. And I really wanted to share that with you guys because I don't know how many of you here right now are focusing on a part of you that God doesn't want you to think of, that you need to change your perspective. You're comparing yourself to maybe people at church, maybe people in your family, maybe your friends. God doesn't want you to do that. God has never asked you to compare yourself or to, to hold this level of expectation to change. Like God loves you. And I know it's, we sometimes are like, oh, God loves you. No, he loves all of you. He loves inside and outside of you. He created you intentionally for that reason. So when I had that realization, I truly, I was like, wow, devil, you are so dirty. Not no more, no heck no. Like God, you created me this way. Like, okay, God, like help me, help me feel good. Like, what do you want me to do? Help me feel good. Like, show me. Like, you created me this way. What do you want to do with this? And and literally, like, things started to change. I'm not gonna say it changed in one day, you know, but things started to change. And, and Erica can attest to this because it's just like it, it made sense. Like I wasn't going against the grain anymore, you know. Um, so the realization that I had is when we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially agreeing with the plans of the enemy. We are falling right in in, in, in his traps. Comparison is the thief of joy. It's a stretcher of truth. Yes. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a thief of joy because we are essentially not only devaluing ourselves, but we are allowing ourselves to feel in, in, inferior to this level of expectation that no one has ever placed on us. Um, it seals our confidence because we constantly think that we're not good enough. 
the very trait that some of you guys, like I said, might be comparing to others and wishing was different is a very trait that could be qualifying you for whatever purpose God has for your kingdom. And I want you guys to really receive that today in Jesus' name. I pray that. Um, so one of the lessons that I learned is don't fall into the traps of the enemy. Don't be blinded, coveting what your neighbor has um, because it, it's going to distract you. So we need to stop focusing on who we are not and start focusing on who we actually are. So in this room right now, um, if there's anyone here who's maybe more quiet, more soft-spoken, and sometimes you kind of wish that you weren't, maybe God is allowing, God created you that way so that you could create a safe environment where people who are not extroverted and not outgoing feel comfortable opening up. Maybe that's a beautiful skill and trait that the Lord loves about you because you're gonna help bring others to, to fellowship in a safe place. On the flip side, if you are more assertive and address conflicts without a problem, and sometimes that has gotten you in trouble, right? Because we need to go to God for everything, for that balance. Just like, yeah, I love you. I need to bring it to Jesus. But if, if that's you, and if you're more assertive and you're more comfortable addressing things, maybe God wants to use that in you with the right balance, of course. Uh, but maybe he wants to use that in you so that you can help bring justice to some situations that are occurring around you that, that he needs someone to have that boldness and that courage to step up and not be uncomfortable speaking out. If there's someone here who, like one of my friends, um, has, a, has the beautiful ability uh, to look at the silver lining in any conflict, and maybe that really bothers your friends sometimes, you know what? Maybe God has placed that, that perspective in you, that ability to see things differently, because he's calling you to be a peacemaker. Okay. That is a beautiful gift. This world can sometimes be very dark, as we all know, and cold, and God needs more people to bring light into a situation. Um, Maybe you're on the flip side of that too. If you are someone who's constantly playing devil's advocate, right? Oh gosh, sometimes, you know, when you're in a situation, you really don't want to hear that, you know? But praise the Lord for those friends that do that say that because you know what? It might frustrate us, but you know what? God has intentionally blessed that person with the ability to think like that. And you know what? Maybe God wants to develop that in you so that you can come and serve him, strategize, help strategize and cast out vision and, and build a plan for something in his kingdom that's going to make an impact. Maybe that's something that God is doing in you. But we're too focused on what we're not doing, what we can't do. Um, I don't know if there's someone in here who maybe thinks that they're not a good salesperson and they, and, and they hate their job and they think that they're a failure. But you know what? God has given you an, a beautiful ability to be such a good caretaker. The way you take, of your, take care of your children, your grandmother, your mother, maybe God's purpose in you is to develop that caretaking where maybe he's calling you to be a nurse and, and be an extension of his hand and feet here on, in this earth. We really need to stop focusing on what we're not doing right, what we don't have, and start focusing on what are the areas that God has given me that comes naturally. Okay, also disclaimer, everything I said, we need to go to God and have a balance. So any of those things can be one issue or the other. So I'm just saying that I don't want anyone to be like, well, no, they said that. I'm like, yes, we did, but you know, you gotta bring it to God. So just, just a disclaimer. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, just a disclaimer, God. God has to be in the center of everything. He is the one, and, and even with me, and I, I shared with you guys, like my, you know, my ability to love and uh, to receive love and give love, I need to go to God for that. Because, you know, just like I wanna love on everybody, like. I can't, and sometimes some people, mm -hmm. God doesn't want me to, or maybe it's not the right Good. time, you know? Yeah. So God right. needs to be the one that's constantly telling me who to love, how to love them, and when. There we go, that's good. And the same thing with like, how to receive love, you know? Like, I can't put that on my husband, so if I'm feeling a certain way, I need to go to God. And I and, and, and being completely genuine here with you guys, I can't tell you guys how many times, for some, it's just an attack of the enemy, but I don't know where it comes from, it just hits me, and I feel inferior. And I literally, like, I thank God, thank you, God, that I catch that thought, I catch that feeling, and I take it to God, and I'm like, God, you know, today I feel insecure, I feel inferior, I need you to tell me why am I loved? You know, your word says that you love me, but why do you love me? Why am I special? What is it that you're gonna use me for in the season that I'm in right now? And I can't, I, I literally enter crying, and I go out of there being like, yes, like, thank you, God, you know? Um, and that's so beautiful that we all have that relationship with the Lord. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really praying in Jesus' name that, you know, you guys hearing this today is really ministering to you. Yes. Um, Whatever it is that God is putting in your heart, you know, we're gonna, later on, we're gonna close out in prayer, but something else that I wanna sh share with you guys is what I learned. And the word of God says that if you resist the devil, he will flee, right? Ooh. But then you know you know how things work in the world that we live in, everything's spiritual warfare. He'll come back and he'll, he'll start, you know, breaking something else to, to start distracting you and attacking you with. And so that was what happened in the beginning of my walk with God. And then towards like, still the beginning, but like more towards the middle. Um, um, I 
started, so I started like diving in, right? I started diving into my walk with God and I was just so excited. And I had heard earlier on, that in, like in my heart, I knew God was calling me to the prayer team. But I was like, I've never prayed out loud before. I come from a Catholic like background. Like I, I'm not, I don't know how to pray. All these girls around me, they pray and they like recite scripture. Like I'm not like that. I'm not there yet. I was like, wow. And I literally, I, I said no to God for a year, guys. A year. I was like, no. A year, the year uh, passed, and then again, I felt it in my heart again. And I was like, oh, I feel for me. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that, God. And then God is so good that He confirmed it when someone else, and, and I was in freedom at the time, and someone else stayed after, and they said that to me. And I was like, oh my God, Lord, I can't ignore this. And I was like, okay. And I said yes. I joined the prayer team. And I think it, I don't remember exactly how, but I think it was like three or four months later, they asked me to be the lead on the prayer team. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm like, oh my God. And I, and then what, what started happening is I started comparing myself right. to the other women that had grown up in church their whole life. Women who had like these little wise spiritual grandmas that like would like share with them the prayers and like, oh, the yeah. prayers. you know, I'm like, I, I mean, I'm still praying for that, that old lady that will come to my life. <laughs> so much knowledge so much wisdom so much experience and I'm like I don't have that like I, it's just you and me God like I don't have my family wasn't like you know I, I don't have anyone it's just you and me Lord um I started comparing myself and honestly what the devil meant to use for evil God is so good and so faithful he turned it around for good because you know Amen. what that did that pushed me to read his word more that pushed me to learn more about God it pushed That's me to right. serve him it pushed me to go all in and I was going through a lot too in my life like my dad was sick all these different things were going on too but I was so immersed in God's kingdom and what he was doing in me I was I was joyful in a time where it would have been so hard for any person to be joyful and yes. I still had I mean I was sad of course right but I still had joy in my heart and I, I thank God for that so much so I started comparing myself and comparing myself and thankfully you know God used it for something good because it really pushed me to seek him more but you know what the really cool thing is? That now, fast forward a couple of years, I've met so many new and wonderful faces here, so many women, they come up to me, and when they find out that I'm technically a new Christian, because I've been less than five years, like, saved, um, it's like a little bit more, I don't know how long, I always forget, Journey. How long has Journey been here? Five years. Five years. Five years. So less than five years yeah. that I've been on this journey with God, and they're super surprised. I had somebody once something like, girl, I thought you were Pentecostal. I was like, oh no, girl, I grew up Catholic. And they're like, Catholic? And I'm like, I know, right? So <laughs> I know it's crazy, but people people are surprised when they when they hear it. And you know, and I, and I take that as a compliment because they tell me that, like, wow, you have so much fervor. Like you have, and I'm like, wow, like that to God, God gets all the glory there because he and his Holy Spirit have been doing a work, a work in me. But I'm so extremely grateful because when they hear that, they're like, wow. So if God did that in you. He can do it in me. And I'm like, yes, girl, you grew up in church your whole life, girl. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you you know what it's like to, like, uh, there's some things that I'm still experiencing for the very first time, you know? Um, and so I'm like, girl, like, you have so much knowledge. Like, I, I you know, and, and I share that with them. And like, yeah, I went through this. And I'm like, I'm so incredibly sorry that you went through all of that. But you know what? Maybe God is about to send someone in your life that can can relate to what you went through. And you're going to be able to minister to them, yeah, yes. you know? Um, so I'm so grateful that, like, God allowed me to take take whatever I was starting to feel insecure and comparing myself about it. He used it for something good. And then it was able to inspire somebody else. Um, when I was preparing for this, um, something I, I, I came across and I really loved is the only measure, the only metric, the only measure of comparison that any of us should ever have in our life is comparing ourselves to the word of God and our obedience to it. And I was like, wow, that is such a good word. So good. I literally shared it with my husband. I was like, we need to remember that. Like, I need to put that on a post-it in my mirror every day because it's something that as women, like, I, I know men struggle with it too, but for the for the sake of today, I know it's all women here. Um, it's something that we do all the time. Sometimes we don't even realize it. Sometimes we even compare ourselves to a previous version of ourselves. I don't know yeah. if you guys do that. Like, that's not like, wow. I know. And it's like, no. Like, that's a different season. Yeah. That's a different season. The season that God has you in right now, you know, it's, 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 he's intentional. Um, so I want everyone here right now, um, I know everyone has two index cards. I want everyone here right now to think about if there's something that the Holy Spirit ministered to you as you were listening to this, if there's an area in your life that you feel God is asking you to stop comparing, that you've been focusing so much in a way, in a negative way that's been devaluing you, what is that area? And this is only for you, no one else is going to see this, but I want you, in one of the cards, I want you to write down whatever that area in your life. And if it's a lot, write them down. Yes, okay, yeah. So just in, on the one index card, if you guys are missing one, Erica has some extra index cards. But I want you guys um, to write down if there's something that the Holy Spirit pressed in your heart that he wants you to stop comparing. If there's an area in your life that you've been comparing yourself to somebody else or to something else, 
and he wants you to stop comparing that area of your life, I want you to write down whatever that is. So maybe you're struggling with like your physical image. You're comparing yourself to this version of, of models and, and, and superstars and Instagram people that you need to be. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your gift. Maybe it's your children. I don't know what it is, but I know that the Holy Spirit is here today and he's, he's guiding all of us. So whatever it is that he pressed upon your heart, I want you to write that down. And again, no one's going to see this. It's just for you guys. Give everybody hopefully 30 more seconds to write it down. If you need a pen, Erica has Sharpies back there. She's right here. This is already comparing cards. Okay, we're gonna pray, Abby. Don't worry, we're gonna. Pray. Okay. All right. So hopefully everybody, um, and if and if someone did it, that's awesome. But I know that it's very common, so we probably <coughs> all can think of at least one thing. Um, so on the second card, what I want you guys to do, and, and don't write anything down yet, just listen. On the second card, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to write out a prayer, and you're going to start by thanking God for the parts of you, the traits in you, the skills in you that you're grateful that you do have. Okay, and then you're going to invite God in your prayer and ask Him to help you accept and focus on whatever it is that you wrote down on the other card. And invite God in that prayer to reveal to you the purpose, the reason why he created you that way. Invite him into the journey of you as, as the woman that you are because he loves you so incredibly much. And I know his heart breaks when we devalue ourselves. Essentially, when we do that, we're telling God that he made a mistake and he, he does not make mistakes. So I want you guys in the second card, I want you guys to write that prayer. Thank him for the good things about you that you like. Think of a couple of skills or traits that you love and, and then invite him to help you focus and, and redirect your perspective on the something, the part of you that you're struggling with. And then ask him to reveal to you your purpose. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. If anyone needs another card, just raise your hand and we'll bring one to you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord God, thank you so much for being here today, Father God, with us. Thank you, God, because you have just awakened, Father God, a hunger for you. And that's what got us up here early on a Saturday morning, um, united, Lord, in fellowship, and just eager to hear and see what you were going to impress in our hearts, Father God. Lord, I thank you so much for each and every woman that is here today, God. I thank you, God, for everything that you've taken them out of from. Lord, thank you for everything that you're doing in their life. Thank you, Father God, for the beautiful things that you're about to do in their future, God. Thank you, God. Lord, thank you for creating each and every one of us so beautifully and perfectly according to your perfect plan and your image, God. Lord, we know that you are a God who does not make mistakes. We know that every single part of us, Father God, was deposited in us because there is a void in this world that only we can fill. Each and every one of us, Father God, has a unique purpose that has our name on it. And only us, Father God, only each human here today, Father God, is able to fill that void in this world. God, I pray right now for, for every woman um, and their mind. In the name of Jesus, we just declare that you will continue to be the stronghold that resides in, in, in our mind, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we just declare that you are going to take every thought that does not come from you, Father God, and you're going to make it submit to your will. You're going to help us unlearn what we have learned. You're going to help us, Father God, believe what you want us to believe. Understand, Lord Jesus, your truth and who you say we are. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that every time each and every one of us looks in the mirror, Father God, we will see that we are called, we are chosen, we are more than enough, Father God. And you will always be there for us, God. Thank you for loving us, Father God, when sometimes we have not loved ourselves. Thank you, God, so much for sending a support system around us, Father God, that are current, constantly pushing us, Lord, closer and closer to you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for removing the veil from our eyes and allowing us to see the plots and schemes of the enemy, Jesus. God, we love you so much, and we just pray right now, Father God, that you continue to refine us, sanctify us, purify us, God, so that we may see ourselves how you see us and be able to focus on what you've given us. Focus on the qualifiers, Father God, that are going to help us carry out your purpose and your calling, Jesus. God, we love you so much. Please be with us, Father God. And thank you, God, because we know that before we even prayed this, you were already at work. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 So, we're going to end here. So, we're going to always dance. <clears throat> with a Q&A. So if you guys have any questions about what Obama spoke about, um, you're free and open to raise your hand and ask. And honestly, this is a free space. Every time that we do a Q&A, there have been some questions, but we've been able to navigate them. And if it's something that we can't answer over here, we definitely want to speak to you afterwards. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to raise <laughs> Okay, so when you were speaking in regards of how you felt that the way you love is so intense and so passionately, first of all, you were speaking to me because I heard that my entire life, like being too much. So how did you work through that? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't. I, it wasn't until I came to God. Like I thought that something was wrong with me. Um, and I, I'm so glad that I was like desperate and broken and I had to hit rock bottom because I was like, God, like, why won't you change this in me? Like, why do you allow me to be this way? And this was before I took the premarital, count. like, this was like years before I even met my husband. And he told me, like, don't you see I created you this way? Don't you? Like, so I, that's why I, um, I encourage everyone here, if you guys haven't had the opportunity to sit down in the presence of God, not, not, not to pray, not to read your Bible, not to worship him, but just to ask him, like, God, what do you what do you love about me like why am i special like i know you love my sister i know i know you love my leader but me i'm my own person like what do you love about me and why i i encourage you to do that and and i don't like god will put things in your heart you allow you'll allow him to speak to you and start seeing things differently um so i i didn't like i was how old was i 26 26 when i came to church i'm 31 now um I didn't, and I'm so sorry that you've heard that lie because I, I know what that's like. I know not feeling good enough, thinking that something's wrong with you, thinking that, I mean, I'm not, I pray that this is not the case, but I used to worry that no man would ever love me. I used to worry that no man would ever be able to stand being near me because that's how I felt. I felt rejected even by my own family, you know? I mean, I was called overbearing and that hurt me so much because I just wanted to love, you know? Um, so I encourage you, like my, my response to you would be like, take that to God, ask him to show that to you. And sometimes you might not hear him immediately. And you know why I've learned that too? Because he's drawing you closer to him. Because if he tells you in one sit down, you might not come back to him tomorrow. And he wants to continue bringing you closer so to him. Good. So, good. so I really encourage you to do that. And 
if he doesn't answer you right away, he might start answering you other things that you need to hear so that you can receive when he finally does tell you that. Yeah. That's also something I've also learned too. But thank you for sharing and opening up. And I'm so incredibly sorry that <laughs> words of death were spoken over you. Have you gone through freedom? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying because that's something that I learned in freedom too. And it's not because I'm over freedom, I promise, guys. But it, 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 I promise it's not. But it's because in freedom, we learn the power of words and the power of positive words spoken over our life and the positive the, the power of words of death spoken over us. Yeah. And even the words that we speak over ourselves. So if you have any questions, talk to me after. But I think that it would be really beneficial for you to go through freedom um, because God helps us to unlearn things that we believed and then they become strongholds in our life. So uh, in the name of Jesus, I'll be praying for you. Um, can you come talk to me after? Because I'd love yeah. to know your name. And, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any other questions? because that's part of the challenge of being that kind of person you know like if there's someone here who can't relate to to that feeling like that like that's awesome that means you probably don't you know experience the kind of rejection that we do on a daily basis but um i would say again like not to make it about that but it is it's i mean god is here and he's hearing me and he knows i'm not lying like your relationship with god so at first when it first started i needed to go to him like you know how you're like okay we all know we're not supposed to steal kill destroy right those are basic 101 like we know that right um within that area i really like i went to him a lot like i remember feeling and erica knows i remember feeling rejected here at church too um and that was just the enemy trying to keep me away um but i was like god i want to leave this church and i'm like you know they didn't accept my love they they like spoke words of death and blah 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 and two people like not even like you know and i took it to god and god was like no and I was like, what do you mean? No, I want to leave. And he's like, no, you're going to stay and you're going to do something and you're going to learn something. Um, and I use that example because at first, at first when I didn't know, when I was still like my emotions and my spirit were like still kind of like figuring out like, okay, my spirit needs to leave, not my emotion, not my thoughts. I would take everything to God. And I'm so grateful because he is like the owner of all the wisdom and knowledge. And he would tell me and, and also on the flip side, because you're talking about like loving yourself and respecting you. Right. So God, God would be like, yes. Love your husband, even though he did this. Like, I haven't called you to love him only when he's good to you, you know? And so I'm like, That's good. okay, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I will go and I'll apologize. And I'm so glad because, like, choices lead, feelings follow, you know? So on that side. And then on the other side, too, sometimes you want to love and be there so much for someone. And you know what I learned? I didn't know this before. And I think I thank God again for that. Sometimes... God doesn't want you to love and be there for that person. I know that sounds horrible, right. but the reason for that is because if you are, you are essentially preventing them from coming to God, yeah. which, who is who Ooh, they really so need. Yeah. And I literally have learned that, and I'm like, wow. So yeah, wow. I, I saw that, like I was in the process of doing that, and I was like, God, thank you so much for telling me. And now I'm like, now, right, fast forward, now I know, okay, I, I, I can see this already. God places it in my heart. Or sometimes a situation is so hard and difficult that I really don't know, and I need to take it to God, basic 101, like, God, what do I do? But as you start to ask him more and more, you'll start to learn more of his nature. You're, you'll start to um, discern in your heart, like, okay, I'm being prideful. I need to continue. Like, God hasn't called me to love people only when it's easy, only when they're kind, only when they're willing to receive it, you know? God has called me to be a light in the darkness. And that means that this person who's really bitter, yeah, maybe they said some things that they totally shouldn't have to me, but you know what? That just shows me that they really need more of your love, God. So let me come back here tomorrow, go through this again, and show them that I'm not going anywhere because you're the one who's placed me here. Because God is looking out for them, you know? So my encouragement to you would be take it to God at first, and then you'll see that the more he speaks to you, the more you're able to discern like when he wants you to and when he doesn't want you to. Because the not wanting to is just as important. And I that was really like a truth bomb that I learned like a year and a half ago. I was like, and then I saw it and I'm like, wow, God, you're so right. Like if I would have been that person that they need, they were coming desperately to me and I wanted to, thank God that he told me no, because you know what? I would have gotten in the way of what Jesus wanted to do with that person, you know? So I don't know if I answered my, your question, but hopefully I did. Okay. The Lord is the one that like will, will tell us, and I know that's, that's like a, such a such a like general answer. But honestly, He is the one that like will guide us. You know, just like I don't know if you're a mom, but like how do you know how to like 
tough love and like kind love to your kids. God is the one that places that in your heart and you kind of know, but at first I'm sure you did it, you know, or maybe when you made the mistake, you felt something and you took it to him and then he, you kind of like, so it's the same, it's the same thing, you know, when it comes to ourselves, but you're 100% right. God does want us to love ourselves and respect ourselves because if we're not okay, then we can't be there for anybody else. Yeah. So. Right. That's good. Yeah. Um, so I'm the person that like, I've grown through your side where I just like, I can admit my faults and I can, like, I know when I'm being wrong. Um, so I've been kind of like both people. Like I've been the person that's been like, tr like super in love and like I saw love hard. Um, and I've also been like that person to be like, you're too much, you know? And like right now I'm like pregnant. So like, I'm like, back and forth between both <laughs> and my husband he's like his his love like his main love language is physical touch and i'm like <laughs> you're being a lot right now and then when he does it like he wants to be by himself i'm like okay i need all the love, like, give me all the love. <laughs> so like i mean don't i'm one of my questions is like where do i find like what to say so that it's not like you're being too much but it's more of like hey like you know, like, what, what do you, like, how does it work with you and your husband, like, if he ever feels like, okay, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, um, so it's funny because when I, like, I can actually relate to that because I used to be, like, the more, like, loving person, and God is so good that he molded my husband, and now my husband, like, needs what I need, you know? Um, but now I'll, which I never thought this would happen, but now sometimes, like, I need some space, mm -hmm. you know? But I used to be like, hey, no, like, stop, like, can you not? Or, like, and that would, like, make him feel deflated or rejected you know yeah. and so we've talked about it like he'll be like hey you really hurt my feelings like you made me feel this way and then like when you want it then I have to give it to you and I'm and I'm happy to but it's only what you want and it's like no you're so thank you so much for telling me that I don't want that you know and I don't know what your marriage looks like so I'm not gonna say it has to be, the conversation needs to be like that um but I think first talking about it and even before you talk about it like if you like I'm glad that you brought that up because that means you feel a little bit of a conviction in your heart mm -hmm. and maybe it's an opportunity for you to invite God to bless you with wisdom to know how to have that conversation so before you're like, hey, baby, you know, I want to talk to you about something. Like lately, I've been feeling bad because it just our moods aren't aligning. But I want you to know that I love you. You know, before you do that, ask God to give you the wisdom. Ask God to prepare your heart and his and, and your mind and his heart and his mind and, and both of your spirits so that God can be in the center of that conversation. And then maybe instead of saying like, no, you're too much or I don't want right now. Like, babe, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not feeling it right now. I feel like I need some space, but I still want to be around you. Like, is it okay if I just like sit here and like read my word and like, not talk to you? I, I say that because honestly, because he's like, yeah, because you know, when you tell me that you need to go away and you need your space, it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm like, no, you're not. I just have no energy right now and I don't want to talk, but I want to be next to you. Like, is it okay? You know? And then he kind of gets it. So, but before I was like, babe, stop. You know, I'm, I'm going to go for a drive. I just need to be by myself. So, and like, that would hurt him and rightfully so, you know? So, um, again, every marriage is different. Um, but I'm so glad that you feel that in your heart because that means you love him and you care and you're sensitive to that. And maybe God, this is a beautiful opportunity to improve your communication. Now, it's, it's not always going to be roses like that. You know, I don't know what your husband's temperament is like. I am I have a very strong temperament. My, my husband is a blessing from God and he's like more easygoing. If he were more like my sister, I would have to literally like pray for wisdom and discernment and ask God to tell me when to go and talk to him, you know. And sometimes too with my sister. I'm saying my sister because it's a person that is like the toughest, I think, in my heart that I'm trying to think of. Um, I also have to like lead by example. Mm -hmm. So like in the times where she does something and I'm like, you don't deserve this or I don't want this or, you know, I'm like, okay, no, I want her to treat me a certain way, you know? So I like, I model that as hard as it can be for me. Um, so like the next time that like he might come to you and if he, does he, does he say like, no, I don't want to be with you right now or does he always like, he'll just, he'll just, he'll either take it because he'll take advantage of like when he wants it or he'll just be like, Mm, can you go to the room or something? Like, can you just, I'm playing my game or something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he'll be like, oh, I'm just tired or something. So, so maybe the next time too, it can give you an opportunity to kind of like model what you know what what you want, how you want him to react. Yeah. But I also like want to ask Erica because Erica can probably also give another amazing answer to that question because I know her and her. <laughs> really sweet husband like have different personalities too and so you guys like manage on no I mean we're being genuine right like do you have any do you want to answer her questions I'm, I'm the clingy one so <laughs> <laughs> and he's like Erica I need space <laughs> um, 
I think it's about boundaries, honestly. Yeah. Boundaries and communication. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that, that's really good because he's had to tell me because I get rejected when he does that to me because I'm like, excuse me. Especially when I was pregnant. I was like, what? You want all of this? <laughs> and so he, um, he's like, no, I love you. I love you so much. And I know that you're a physical touch, but just like, I'm really tired right now. And I was like, I'm like growing eyeballs. Like I'm tired too. But anyways, I, I'm also like I joke about it. <laughs> I do take it as like a joke. But at first I was like I felt very rejected, especially during my pregnancy because I was like excuse me. And then um, and then I got into like after I had the baby, I did not want to even. I didn't want him to look at me. I was like please don't even look at me. You're gonna get me pregnant again. And then I was like, <laughs> So then he felt it. So it was like it's like a it's it's really a balance, especially with like being pregnant. I feel like it's just it, it's oh right, now, right now, right now you're, you're you're feeling that, but then later you're gonna be like, do not even get close to me because I'm not ready. <laughs> so it's just it's it's really a weighing balance. But having the conversation because I did have to have the conversation with him. I'm like, listen. But I think delivery is very important. Like I think I think delivery makes a difference. So. And what you say. And I always wait for very good timing. I'm like all about timing. So I'm like, today's not the day. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe he's like really happy right now. This is it. This is it. This is my moment. I'm gonna take it. Let's talk. I had to talk to you about something. Sit. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I know that uh, in a lot of the stuff that you're saying today is like take it to God, take it to God. So I've been having like a difficult time with how to keep this. You, I've been taking so many things to him. I just I'm stuck in a state where I can't tell when he's talking to me, when I'm talking to me. Or when Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like this is all the time. So, like the past week, I was like, so I was just like, oh God, but I was so mad at him that I don't even know what I did not say to him. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Like I'm tired of this. I'm tired of bringing things to you. I don't want to talk to you. Like I don't, I don't get it. what's going on. So how can you help? Which is which? So that happens to even me all the time. Just yeah. so you know, like it's that's the enemy, and sometimes also like sin gets in the way i'm not saying that like we're crazy sinners but like we do we sin every day whether we realize it or not you know um so i have two things to say to you one that is natural and that happens to all of us like even our pastors have to take a sabbatical from time to time because they just need to disconnect and connect with god um so what what your question is so common that like god put in my heart over the summer to lead a group frequency on just that how to hear god and so my advice for anyone else here who kind of feels that way is to write down the book frequency by pastor robert morris it's such a good book if you're not a reader, good news is um, there are videos on YouTube. So if you guys want the um, the link, I can share it with you. So just meet me afterwards. Um, but it's Frequency by Robert Morris. Um, and it's so good because before we can hear God clearly, we have to really learn to discern who he is. We have to understand his character, right? So like we don't know who God is. Now, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying that. But if we don't know who God is... Well, we're going to believe the first thing that we hear. We're going to think that that's him. If we're like asking God, inviting him, and we hear something, we're going to think that that's him. But the more we seek for him, the more we'll know like what his, um, like in the Bible, we'll see his character. We'll see like when someone prayed for something, he didn't necessarily speak to them, but he put something in their heart. Or he sent a confirmation through someone. Or through worship, like this person felt something. Like, so I would say that continue to, like choices lead, feelings follow. Continue to, even when it's hard, like there's a barrier. There's a barrier, and that happens to me. There's a barrier sometimes, and I'm like, why am I not hearing you clearly? Or like, why am I? Or sometimes I'll hear like something else that I know it's not God, and the reason why I know it's not God is because I know who God is. Mm -hmm. I know God would never give me a dark word or a discouraging word or tell me like make me feel condemned. That's how I'm like, okay, this is I'm not hearing God right now. I need to get up and I need to worship. I need to invite the the Holy Spirit. And you know what? If I can't hear from God right now today, I'm just gonna sit here in your presence, God, and I'm gonna worship you and I'm gonna praise you and I'm gonna thank you for everything. And tomorrow's a new day, and I'll come back tomorrow and again and again. And something else, and I, what, the reason why I mentioned sin is because sometimes if I had an argument with my husband, um, thankfully Jesus and Jesus and I can kind of continue to be the case, but we don't argue often. Like we, we like God is so good. Like He really prepared us beforehand. Um, and I don't know what's going to change when I have kids. I probably will, but right now we don't. But when we do, it really affects me. It, I'm sure it does. It, it re when we do argue, it really affects me, and like it's like I have, like I, I become like cold in my heart like indifferent and I have a hard time like in prayer and how I fight that literally I have to worship and like my normal time normally in the mornings like I worship like three or four songs like oh my gosh no like this week was so rough on me and I know it was warfare because of today but last night I was at a concert and I was like fasting and I was like no god like and praise the lord jesus that it was like song after song after song like I just 
I felt that God was like breaking something off and like by the end of it, but it was like the whole night, like at the end of that, you know? So sometimes you might not hear for him, like clearly if you feel that block or if you feel that frustrated, because you might be, either it's like warfare or it's your mind, or maybe it's your own like things of what, what's going on. Um, I invite you to prepare the environment for God. And you, again, just disclaimer too, I'm never saying that anyone here needs to do that. Like you can have a conversation with God, hear from God in any way, shape or form. God is available to us because he lives inside of us, yeah. right? Um, but if you're struggling with that, what I encourage you to do, again, is not to be religious, it's not to, there's not a, a specific formula or method. No, God has his own unique relationship with all of us. But my advice to you would be um, acts. I always, uh, especially if it's like a big deal, like if I need to confirmate or I'm struggling and I need clarity or something, like I always start with like adoration. I start like, God, like you're the alpha and the omega. Like you are the one who I get my identity from. Like you are my provider. You are my, like I start with adoration and then I move into confession and I park there. I literally like, think about everything that I have done, everything in that week, everything in that day, that I even like things that I may not, oh my like, God, and there's anything that I don't know that hurt somebody else. Like if there's something that I'm doing though, that is starting to build up, if there's any pride in me, anything, like I I literally like try and just unburden it all and genuinely, right, genuinely, and I'm not just saying it to say it, like I'm saying it from God, I'm so sorry. Then I, and I go into Thanksgiving, and then I like go to supplication, you know, and it kind of helps prepare your heart, your spirit, and also prepares the environment. We were just talking about that in this week's small group, um, preparing the environment. Like we don't need to worship and praise God every time we're going to pray. But when we do do it, you know what happens? You're inviting his presence there. His presence is there, but you're creating an environment where like you feel his closeness. And so that would be um, my, my advice to you. Um, and also just remember that every day is a new day, you know. So I would encourage you to watch the video series or the book because it's so, so good. To get him afterwards, I'll, we'll talk. Yeah, because I was, I was, we were just talking about yeah. that. Jessica's in our small group, so she knows. I just wanted to bounce off of, of what you said, um, but in like response to that, because it's something that I struggle with a lot. Um, but I feel like in this season, I've I've always said like I know it sounds funny, but I'm I'm always like God. I just wish that you can sit on my bed and just tell me what to do. Right. Like I don't want to like all these signs. I don't. Wanna, I just need you to be like Keisha, okay. do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, because I feel like it'd be much easier than me, like, confused and stuff like that. But then I've also had moments where, um, like, it happened, like, maybe two Sundays ago where, um, I'm, you know, I, I worship on the uh, on stage and part of the worship team. Um, but then, like, obviously there's Sundays that I don't um, worship on stage. And I'm, like, you know, like, back here, like, in the crowd. And I'm always, like, super into the song. I was like, okay, God. But, like, there's beauty in silencing yourself, too. You know, because sometimes you need to take a moment to listen. Like, sometimes... We're praying so much and we're saying so yeah. much and we're, mm -hmm. and sometimes like God is like, well, I'm, I'm trying to speak, but yep. you kind of haven't That's let so me get a word in, yep. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Wow. And sometimes I need to take a moment to silence myself and say, okay, God, and I did it like a couple Sundays ago. I'm like, I'm not even going to sing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I sing all the time. I sing for everything. Yeah. Like I turn, <laughs> I can turn any, anything into a song, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I love it, but right, right. But, um, <laughs> she got mad at me once and she's like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> my sister um but, right. um but there is beauty in 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 just being still yeah because you to be completely i mean i could be wrong and anybody can correct me because i'm totally okay with that but i think like we don't need to repeat to god like the same prayer every single day like if i'm worried about my finances or if i'm worried about like something something specific like you know something that i'm waiting for god to do I don't need to bring it to him every single day. If you pray it, God knows what's in your heart. He heard you the first time. At that point, trust him. Wait on him. Like she was saying, like, worship while you're waiting. You know, that, that's important. Uh, and take a moment to say, you know what, God? I'm just going to allow this moment. I already emptied myself out to you. I already told you all the things that are on my mind. I already told you what I'm frustrated. I already told you that I don't know what the heck to do. But now I'm taking a moment to hear you and completely go silent. And um, when she talks about preparation, I think that's so important because when I go into those kinds of moments, I have to tell God, like, speak to me in a way that you know I would understand. Yes. You know, because he speaks to everybody completely differently. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I, I know that my sister and I, we do not retain information the same way, you know? <laughs> so God works in that way, too. He knows that. So I always, I'm like, God, like... I need you to speak to me, whether it's yes, no, or wait. Like, I'm preparing my heart and give me peace if it's something that I don't want. Because sometimes we're praying, like, I want this and this and this. And God's like, I don't want that for you. I want something more. I want something different, you know? But we don't let him get a word in. You know what I'm saying? So just pray that God speaks to you in a way that he, that you know, that he knows, sorry, that you'll understand. And um, and just tell him to prepare your heart for the next step, too. That's what I would do. That's so good. Yes. Yes. Um, I want to add to what you said.
she said too sometimes and I, I, I shared this with your sister what's your name Natalia. Natalia I shared that with Natalia is sometimes God doesn't like I, I know he's always speaking to us so it's whether we're hearing him clearly or not because sometimes we have distractions but sometimes God intentionally chooses not to answer us and it's for a reason yeah maybe you're coming to him with a and you think that a is so important in your life but God's like I'm not worried about A. I want let's talk about B and C, you right. know? And he's drawing you near to him. So that frustration, like, I'm sorry that you were upset. I'm sorry that you, you know, you got really mad with the Lord, but he's like, She'll be back tomorrow because she needs me, you know, and I want her here. This time that tomorrow, you know. So sometimes God intentionally does that because it's his way of drawing us near to him. It's good. And I'm so thankful for that because Keisha was talking about like, oh, I want someone in uh, my I want God right here in my bed to tell me this is what you need to do. Yeah, but if we did that, which I, girl, I know I'm, I'm very impatient too. But if, but if, if God did that, would we come back no, to Him? Yeah. Probably not. You know, probably not. Or, or we'd be like, okay, I got this, thank you, and we'd be on our way, right. thinking that we can do things on our own strength and capacity. So God is so perfect, and He knows His creation so well. He knows what we need, and He's listening to you, and He wants it. He's a God of clarity and truth, and He's your best friend. He's your comforter. And so I love it. I'm being real with you. I love it when I hear people say, like, I told him this and this. God loves that. God right. loves that he honest that relationship. Because he knows you're thinking it. Mm-hmm. Like, right. you know, like he Same. wants you to have that real <laughs> that real relationship with him. So yeah. I'm proud of you for that. And I know he probably laughs. Sometimes he's sad when you're sad, you know. But he loves you so much and he's there for you. So continue to seek him. Um, I also, I know we're like partying on this question. But depending on what you're going through too, sometimes there are things that like you really need to like maybe fast and pray about it if it's a big deal you know you're not going to get it in the morning when you're sitting down with the lord like maybe this is like serious like you need to go away you know to a park for a day and like just fast that day and, and, and just spend that time with god away from your phone away from your kids away from your husband you know from work all those things and just be isolated from everything you know so yeah. so when we were talking about that i just had a thought come in yeah so i thought of the disciples when you were talking about having like God sitting at the table, at, like at, on your bed, because the disciples had Jesus, right? So they were like literally with him. And Jesus asked them to pray. And how many times did they end up not praying? Like Jesus told you, <laughs> Jesus who just did a bunch of miracles, told you, go pray. So if it was me, I mean, I would think that, but also probably like the disciples. <laughs> so it's like, if you think that, you're like, yeah, of course, I would be praying. Like Jesus said, pray, I'm gonna pray. Um, they also got like advice from him. They're like, you know, like I would never deny you. And he's like, you're gonna deny me. He's like, I would never deny you. And then he went and went and denied him. So like, sometimes we think that if by having that, like so many times I'm like, Jesus, just talk to me. And like, he's probably like, I am talking to you. You're just not listening. Yeah. But like, I, if there's anyone to compare ourselves to with who literally had the human form of God in front of them, were the disciples and they didn't even listen. So like that just shows how much we just need to consistently be connected. Yes. So like good. I connect everything through like stories. Like Alana knows. Oh, like uh, I'll yeah. see something, like we'll talk about something and I'm like, oh that's like David. And like this part is like true story. True story. It's like, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that I connect things. So like as that was saying, like I don't know if anyone else needs connection, but sometimes we need that. Like I need that. Like I need to know that there's like a story that I can go to and like relate to and I could spend time in that during my situation. So if that's you I would say like see them and don't be so hard on yourself for not hearing that for being cluttered because they had Jesus in front of them and even they made mistakes even they denied Jesus even they doubted Jesus like he Thomas was like right saw Jesus like right in front of him and he's like no I need to put my fingers through the holes in your hands and you're just like bro <laughs> like, just 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 believe anyways so <laughs>
y'all, y'all should, everybody should do it. Um, it was that, that I compulsively love and things like that. And then part of it is that I, um, <laughs> um, I'm like, no, I don't, right? And then um, I realized that it's because I had not healed the child in me of the person that was hurt because that was violated, right? And so um, as I was hearing all your stories like of loving and like, then you're like, so I love so much and then um, I don't love anymore. And for me, I learned the importance of boundaries of uh, realizing that you know, you can love people and love them hard, but also understand that if they can't love you correctly, it's time for you to love yourself in order to move on from that. You know what I mean? And realizing that if someone can't love you through that healing process, then they're not meant to be in your life at that moment. And that doesn't mean you don't love them, but love them from a distance and understanding that you are not the pain that you went through. And so something that for me was freedom and I cry, I promise, as like in a victim, as a survivor, as someone who I know who I am in Christ. Um, but I remember that in the healing process, people brought up things from the past that I thought I had healed from, yep. like being a divorcee, being abused, being promiscuous. And I realized that God was like, you say this, as an adult, you understand this, you are not your mistakes. Yeah. God has turned those messages into messages but until you don't forgive the child in you mm. that was surviving Ooh, and was yeah. a product of that, you will never be able to break through and truly love how I want you to love others. Um, and so you build walls, right? And so something uh, um, with the book, Women of All, another one, everybody should read, um, is that, um, you know, God doesn't ask us to be perfect. And I think that as women, we are, because of magazines, because of social media, because of other people, we're like, wow, they're so put together, their their hair's on point, their eyelashes are bomb, like they're all fit good. I'm over here a hot mess express. And it's like, you know, like, I don't have her, you know? But, you know, but like the reality is that at the end of the day, like we've been called to be truthful and to speak our truth because at the end it's about God, it's not about us. And so when we are trying to be perfect, we we're often not honest. And so, like, in the book, she talks about that. It's like, you know, Eve, like, she admitted her, like, her mistake. And she, you know, um, admitted that the enemy, like, tricked her and manipulated her. And now she's walking in that truth and moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think I would say for all of you guys that, that struggle with, like, loving people. And then now, like, that's who I am, but I don't present that to the world. I have this hard shell. Like, maybe you have to forgive that, that child in you. Or like you have to allow God to go into that season in your life and heal from that in order to move forward and not compare yourself to someone else's story. Like I can compare myself to someone who was raised with like the two parents, uh, you know, perfect life, everything good, one marriage, good, good, good for you. But that's not my story. Mm -hmm. And there's power in my story. And yes. God has brought people in my life that need to hear my story and heal through my story. And so instead of like, oh man, I'm not like this person. Oh, I can't say, oh, you know, I got married and then we had kids. No, that's not my story. No, I, I got pregnant. Then we, we lived together. Then we got married and then we had another one. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my story. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, you know? <laughs> but do it all. But do it all. You know? And so like, instead of focusing on like, what, what didn't happen or how it didn't happen like this person it's like it happened to me and that's a consequence of what happened to me but i'm gonna move forward from that yeah, that's like, kind of because as i heard everyone's like oh my god like yes yes you know but like and setting boundaries for yourself understanding that you are more you are more than just pleasing others like yeah, yes. you can love yourself yeah. first you yeah. know so yeah and I, I i love that i don't know your name i'm sorry but i love that she asked a, a partial question to what you just said too like how do you do that like you take it to god like i feel like to be honest, I was too dumb to like put up walls like you did. Like I just kept going back for more. Going back for more. Like, I, just, I don't know. That's just I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know? so, I, I, I didn't know how to do that. So like I feel like that's some sort of like intelligence that you had to like be like, no, not anymore, you know? But but at, at the same way, like just like I didn't put up walls, like I'm thankful for it because I know and how you did, you're thankful for it too. You know, all of our stories are different. But I agree with what both of you said and I'm so glad that the answer and I know I'm I'm saying it again, but it's true, you guys, like take it to God. Like, take it to God. And if that means that we're like, well, I, I don't just hear God like that, good. 
that means that you probably need to start working on that you know not in a bad way but like a he's your he's the answer to your problems like he's the answer if this is the season that you're struggling with right now and you don't even know how to do that well then start by that start by like meeting him every day you know making time for him because I guarantee you, if you do that consistently, you will not be in the same place you are today in a year from now, you know? So thank you so much for sharing that. I definitely did see you like nodding and I was like, I hope this is a good thing, good thing, but, <laughs> but, you're, but you're right, like everyone's story. And I hope that after hearing a word of a comparison, none of us here are comparing our stories, you know, to each other's yeah, stories that we've up because that defeats the whole purpose that we're right, here right. listening to. So <laughs> I just pray that. But thank you guys so much. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm so grateful for this. And I'm, again, thank you so much, Erica, and, and your beautiful team for putting this together because this is needed. And I, yes. every time I come to her story, I always leave feeling so like poured into. And like, I think it was, I think it was Kim. Is she here? I don't know if she is. She's with the okay. Oh my God. I was bawling right. my eyes out, like writing a letter to my old self. I was writing it to the Alana that I was sharing with you guys when I first came here, and I was like. If you only knew that, like, God is about to, like, use this in a, you know, so. There were sniffles throughout the whole it was thing. So, and I was like, yeah. It was so good. So I love her story. And so just remember, guys, that whatever you might be focusing on in a negative way, that could be your qualifier. That could be what God is, the very thing that God wants to use for your purpose. But you're just so blinded comparing yourself or coveting your neighbor that you don't realize it, you know. So invite God into that aspect of your life. But thank you, guys. Thank you. So. We are pretty much on time. Seven minutes over. That's all I like to do. great. <laughs> Honoring everyone's time. So the next her story is November 13th. There's a picture of Pastor Jenny, but it's not working. So it's Pastor Jenny. She's going to share a word oh, on purpose. So just so you guys know, save the date. It's same time. It'll be here. Um, but yeah, just uh, enjoy. You can finish up those beautiful little dessert snacks over there. Go get those cookies. <laughs> Bye. Oh, 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 oh